convocation, prayer, study of your word, and worship. I pray that our time today is profitable. We love you so much. Bless the message as it goes forward. As it goes forward to the four corners of the world and from this little place in Fresno. Amen. Remain standing. Turn with me to Psalm 139. We are in the days of awe. These are the days from the blowing of the trumpet until the time of the atonement. And I want to kind of um, label today's message praises to the all-knowing Yah. He's all-knowing, y'all. I'm going to show you when we read this text. A couple of verses and then I'll let you sit down. Verse 1 says, O Yahuwah, thou hast searched me. Uh-oh. O Yahuwah, thou means you, thou hast searched me. Verse 2. Thou knoweth my down city. You know when I sit down. And my uprising, you know when I stand up. You understand my thought afar off. Go down to verse 23. Search me. O oh, Elohim, I know my heart. Try me. That means put me to the test. And know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. You see him say that? And lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Every time I look at that passage, it trips me out when he said, search me. Title, I'm gonna make up another one. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to call this Psalm 139. Yeah, Psalm 139. But I, I think I'm going to talk about search me. Know me. Lead me. Look at somebody say search me. Know me. Lead me. There is no there's no doubt that most of the time when you hear of a search, it normally brings with it a negative connotation. None of us just like to be searched. Y'all in here with me? Y'all rolling with me yet? You know, it's one thing to, to be driving and the red light flash in your rear view mirror. You got to pull over. And they say, well, let me see your license and registration. All right. And they say, will you please step out the car? Now, you know from that point, you're about to move into an area that's very uncomfortable. Because sometimes they will, they will start off by saying, well, you step away from the vehicle and they begin to search your car. It happened to me. I was coming from a jazz concert. I was riding in, in my old school. I ain't talking about no new school. I don't have a new school jag. I have an old school jag. 
that I'm finding. I'm talking about old. And I had put it back together and was driving, and they said they were pulling me over because my window, windows were tinted. I told the man, I said, man, my windows ain't tinted. These are, this car is all original. The rims, the interior, the, I haven't changed anything. He said, sir, step away from the car. We're going to search it. And he started searching too, under every seat. He asked me, you've been smoking weed tonight? I said, no, sir. He would search behind the seat. He pulled the door jam away and looked there. Felt so uncomfortable. And then he said, you have anything on you? I said, no, sir. I'm just going to do a quick, y'all know, I'm going to do a quick search. And I want you to sit up. And, and, and it was because I was driving black. You know, I'm just being honest. It feels weird to be searched. When's the last time you all went through airport security? You got to take off your shoes and your belt. Amen. I feel sorry for folk who ain't got much to hold up their pants. And then I told my wife, I said, I, I said, y'all know I'm, I'm connected to the government. Everybody knows, not connected, but they have my number. So I told my wife, I said, uh, this going to take a while. She said, why? I said, because some kind of way, somewhere along the way, I got on some weird list. And uh, they'll, they'll pull me off the line. She thought I was joking. And that line is wrapped around like a snake. Y'all know them lines, it's like a snake. And everybody's going through the thing and they wand you. Woof, 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 woof. And I've made a point to wear loose fitting clothes and no belt, no shoes so I can get through without being searched. But it never fails. I get right up to the thing and they say, uh, sir, excuse me, would you step out the line? And I know what's coming next. They're going to do the search. Feels uncomfortable. Somebody's searching me. One time, one time they not only searched me, but they put me in this box, this glass box, and they hit a button, and air shot from all four corners of the box. So I was like, whoa, what is this? They said, you know what their excuse was? They said, your clothes were too loose. So that air was shot through the glass to make sure if there was anything you was holding, it would show up. Somebody come search your house. It's uncomfortable. That's this my whole this my whole message. I was telling my wife earlier. It's my whole. I'm not gonna be long. I'm gonna show you something. Being searched is uncomfortable. Whether it's your car, whether it's your house, whether it's your person, because you always feel like even if now if you show sure enough got you know ten pounds of weed in the car, you really in trouble. Or if you got some cocaine in the car. Or if you've got some un some watch this unmarked bills in the car, or if you've got some type of uh, unregistered weaponry in the car, you know how you Hebrews do. Uh, then when you get pulled over, your heart really beating because you know that you've got something in the car. Are y'all still rolling with me? That's gonna get you in talk about trouble. You already know you're in trouble. When they pulled you over, you said, ah, I'm in trouble. And if you're carrying an illegal substance, amen, you got crack pipe and crack. Yeah, come on, I'm talking. You got cocaine and the straw. 10 pounds of weed and the pipe and the zigzag and the blunt. They say, I need to search you, sir. All of a sudden, things change because you know you in talk back. You're in trouble. You're about to be searched. And when we have all this stuff that's illegal, and we know it, watch this. The first thing we say, she said, we riding dirty. If you riding dirty. <laughs> 
First thing we want to say is, that ain't mine. That's not mine. How'd you get that? I don't know. Ain't this is your car, ain't it? Yeah, it's my car. Because we don't want them to take our car. You know, it's my car. Well, is this your stuff? No. It was my cousin Ray Ray. I, I just dropped him off. He must have. They check your pocket. Say, where'd this come from? Say, I, I, I don't know. Wait a minute. These ain't my pants. Am I in the room yet? I told you I'm not going to be up here long. I'm, I promise you, this is, not, this is my sermon today. I want to show you something about being searched. Once you get searched, then there are things that are revealed about you during the search that maybe people didn't know before they searched you. Yeah, they didn't know. <laughs> that you was running dope for the cartel. Uh, they, they, they thought they were just pulling you over because you had a tail light missing, a blinker missing. They didn't, but then they'll put it in the paper. A normal traffic stop, just routine, turned into one of the biggest drug busts in Fresno. Pastor son. Headline, I think. Pastor's nephew. Pastor's daughter, oh, how mercy. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just saying, won't it shock you? All of a sudden, everybody will be like, what? We didn't even know that he was into that kind of stuff. We didn't even know she, are y'all getting it now? Was into that kind of stuff. It didn't get revealed until you were what? Sir. Nobody likes to be searched because it's gonna um, it's gonna reveal some stuff <laughs> that you was trying to keep secret. You didn't want everybody. <laughs> Matter of fact, we don't even want friends over our houses snooping and searching in rooms they ain't got no business. Yeah, let's let you find a. I'm talking about a good friend. I'm talking about your road dog. I'm talking about the one you go to Vegas with. But if they come over your house and be looking up under the bed of your bed, you'd be like, hey, 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 hey! What you looking for? Because you might have snatched, you might have hid something up under that bed that you don't want people to know is up under there. Y'all still with me, right? It's my whole sermon. It's my whole message. Is that searching is uncomfortable. Now watch this. It's so uncomfortable that we don't even like searching our own selves. We, we don't have a problem searching others and reading other people and knowing their business and trying to find out about it and searching out a matter. We don't have no problem when it's others. But when it comes to us, there's always this reluctancy to do an actual search, a true inventory of you. That's what this week of all is all about. It's about being searched. You ought to be able to search yourself like Rabbi Shaul. He said, I searched myself. And the more I search, the more I realize that in me dwelleth, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. That's hard to come to that kind of conclusion about you when you've been telling yourself all year how good you are and how blessed you are that you're not as bad as somebody else. And then you start being honest with yourself and say, wait a minute, I might be as bad as everybody else. I just ain't got caught. This is a rough one because it's the, this is what this week is about. It's the days of all. It's the day of searching. That's what it's about. But our, our second king from the tribe of Yehuda, King David, had a, has a song here that is incredible. And if y'all let me get these few minutes out, I'm going to bid you farewell. This is incredible. He said, 
He is not talking about the police. He's not talking about friends. He's not talking about himself. He's asking the most high Yah to perform a search on him. Now, you know what? When a police searches, he may miss something. When your friend searches, they may miss something. When you search, you might be so prejudiced towards yourself, you might miss something. But he's not asking for a police to search him or his friends or him. He asked the most high. It's right here in the Bible. I just read it. He says, oh, yeah, you have searched me. I said searching, right? Second thing he says, and you know me. Hold on. Got to pause there. He said, you know me. Now, what does that mean? I don't have time to deal with the whole thing in the Hebrew, but let me show you what it means. It means that you are well acquainted. That means I'm not just some passing thought to you. I stay on your mind every day, all day. You know me Meaning, you know everything about me, which is strange. Because most of us are afraid to tell the people around us everything about us. Because if we tell them everything and they know everything, they just might not want to be with us. But David, our second king, said... I gotta, I'm going to confess something. I already know <laughs> that you have searched me. And I already know that you know me, which is very interesting because you searched me and you know me and you still like me. You searched me and you know me and you still call me your child. You searched me and you know me and yet I'm still the king of your people. You search me and you know me and yet I'm still preaching and prophesying in your name. And he goes into this long thing. Can I read it to you and get out of your way? Can I just read this? Try not to give too much commentary. Watch what he says. He says, you know me. You're so intimate with my ways. You know every time I sit down. Verse 2. He says, you know when I get up. You know Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Now that's something else. When a person knows the thoughts you're going to think before you think them. Ooh, I don't want to know that. I, mm -mm, no. I'm married. My wife and I, we get along fine. I'm just going to roll with the thoughts as they come. I don't want to know the future thoughts. He says, you know what I'm thinking before I think the think. <laughs> I know that's not good English. Before I think the thought, you already have knowledge of it completely. And you understand it. You can pass my path and my line down. He says, you are the one who hang out you were there as I journey through the day. And you know when my day is over exactly where I'll be laying down. Because you're acquainted with all my ways. Wait a minute. That's kind of scary. You know all my ways? Oh yeah, I do. For there is not a word in my tongue. There is not a word in my tongue. Woo, some of us, come on now, I told you it's the days of all. Some of our tongues, oh my goodness gracious. So bad, so dirty, so nasty. And yet, Yahuwah is acquainted with every one of those words. I'm talking about from F-bombs. Are y'all with me here? B-words, D-words. A words, S words. He says, you've already searched me. You know me. And it's unfortunate that my mouth ain't better. Because you know all my, you know my language. And y'all know our language is jacked up. We got cussing problems. I grew up in the country. 
Cussing was just how we got down. But he said, you know it all together. It's an amazing thing here. Verse 5. Thou hast beset me behind and before. Now watch this. He says, you, he, he, he said, you are omnipresent. And you're set up in front of me and you're set up behind me at the same time. He says, and your hand, you've laid it upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. He said, I can't deal with that. Do you see him confessing his own inact his own lack of understanding of how Yah could know every intimate detail about him. He says right now in verse uh, 6, he says such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. In other words, it's higher than me. How you can do that? How you can see me and know me and walk ahead of me and be behind me and know my thoughts before I think them and when I rise before I rise and where I sit in my path and my destination. He said, I cannot understand. I can't comprehend that. He says, matter of fact, in verse 7, there's nowhere I can go from your spirit. And if I wanted to run, where could I go from your presence? Verse 8, if I ascend up into the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the grave, that word hell there has to do with the grave. He says, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost part of the sea. Wait, what? He says, if I'm able to take the wings of the morning. Now, you know the wings of the morning be flying, right? He says, if I'm able to jump on the horizon and fly as the morning is passing, if I can go that fast and as the morning goes out over the sea, I'm able to go with the morning to the sea and get out into the midst of the sea. He said, uh, <laughs> uh, even there. <laughs> You know, there's no escaping the all omnipresent Yahuwah. Verse 10, even there thy hand shall lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I shall say, surely darkness shall cover me. Now he says, but what if I get in the dark? What if I say, let me get in the dark place? Then maybe he won't see me there. He won't have a perfect knowledge of me if I just do what I'm doing at night. If I just do what I'm doing with the shades pulled, if I just do what I'm doing where it's pitch black, if I just do what I'm doing under the cover of night, he says, even night <laughs> shall be light to me. He said, I can't even get away in the night slipping off at one or two in the morning. It's already dark, and then you meeting up somewhere that's already dark. Then you pulling down the shades, amen. Turn the key off, or close the door, turn the window. Hide that, hide this. He said it's just like being in the light to him. Y'all have made me lose my spot a little bit here. Oh, he said, verse 12. Yeah, the darkness hideth not from thee. Come on now, are you serious? How can darkness hide anything? But the night, this is a cold line right here. But the night shines as the day. Did you know that to Yah, night shines? Like daytime? Right here, I'm going to read faster now. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. That's why we can't get caught up in this whole <laughs> thinking you can escape. Come on, yeah. Just listen to the song. We'll keep going quickly, quickly now. He says, for thou hast possessed my reign. That means you, you, can, you, you are in control of the cords that run my life. He says, and thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. In other words, I know you're the one who actually made me in my mama's womb. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul Knoweth right well, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. He says, when I was being formed and the human eye could not even see the development, you were doing a marvelous work making me perfect. Hallelujah. Thine eyes deceive my substance, yet being imperfect, 
And in thy book, uh-oh, I was going to preach, that was going to be my line at first, but anyway, he says, in thy book, all my members were written. Now, I need to share something. We got to stop killing these babies. Because David said, while I was being formed, he counted everything on me. Every finger, my nose, my ears, my lips, every member. He knew that he made. So when that doctor, which is not a doctor of life, but a murderer, goes in to kill that baby, they dismember the child. Then they got to turn around and count the parts. Y'all said, the most high revealed, I know every member of the body. Even before folk could see it. I already wrote it in a book. I put two eyes, two ears, and nose, and mouth, hands, elbow, fingers, fingernails, fingerprints. I made a male or female. Feet, knees, toes, shin. Which is continuous with fashion. When as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts. That's my second point. Not only does he search me, but he knows me. Now watch his thoughts towards me. He says, how great is the sum of them. Here's the word that he said. It's, it's, it's really amazing to David how the Most High Yah could be thinking about him all the time. He says, I couldn't add up the number of times you as my heavenly father thinking about me. If I should count them, this is what he says in verse 18, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Surely thou will slay the wicked. Oh, yeah. And then he starts talking about the wicked people hanging around. He said, listen, y'all better know the most high that I serve. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. I'm always on his mind. He knew me in the beginning. He knows me now. He knows my thoughts. He's still with me. So guess what? All of you, my enemies, you better get the step. Depart from me, you bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do you see that? He says, you've got enemies. I'm your friend. But you've got enemies that take your name in vain. I don't want to buy me. Uh-oh. Verse 21. You don't hear this in Sunday school. Do I not hate them? King David said, I hate your enemies. I hate the ones that take your name. I hate. It's in your Bible. If you don't believe it, tear, you, tear it out. You got some scissors. You got, you got, you're strong enough to tear that little page. Tear it out your Bible if you don't want it to be in there. He says, do not I hate them, O Yah, that hate thee? This is your king talking. Am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? Don't it bother me every time somebody stands up against you? Now watch this. Verse 22. I hate them with a perfect hatred. Monet, I don't know what a perfect hatred is, but whatever that perfect hatred was, he hated the enemies of Yah with that kind of hatred. It was perfect. He said, and I count them, it's in the Bible, my enemies. Do you see that? He said, the enemies of you are enemies of mine. You know, all he's declaring is, I'm on your side. So the wickedness that you're fighting, I'm going to fight. The evil men that you fight, I'm going to fight. The people who want to kill me, watch what he says. I've discovered something. They're not after me. They hate you. He says, so therefore, I'm going to just team up with you. And I'm going to hate who you hate. Now, I know that's rough because y'all didn't get taught that in no Sunday school class in one of them Christian churches. But the Hebrew been reading this since he was two years old. This is not new to the Hebrew. 
This is part of the literature that they grew up on. Memorizing. Then he says, search me. Oh yeah, I'm through. See, I told you. And know my heart. He says, search me and know my heart. Now watch what he says. He says, search me and then know my heart. And then he asked the most high to test it. You know what that means? Prove my loyalty. Don't just, when you test me and you know me, I mean, when you search me and then you're going to know me, he says, but now I want to be put to the test in front of the whole wide world so that the result of the test will be that I am on your side. You get it? See, a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. If you and I want to be trusted, then we must volunteer to be tested. When people want to get into the little stupid local gangs, they always have some kind of dumb initiation to see whether or not this person is actually willing to cross the line for the game. Go break into that house and steal five purses and come back and we're going to let you in. That's the test. If you want to get in the mile, hang out with Fat Tony now. Oh, you might have to bump somebody off. And it might be a test to see where your loyalty lies. If you want to hook up with the Illuminati, one of those tests is which one of your relatives are you willing to kill to be a part of us? And if you just read the record among Hebrews that done got caught up in that foolishness, some of them said, I'll let my mama go. Some of them said, my brother, my sister, my cousin. They want to be with the Illuminati so bad. And then you read the red headlines. So-and-so shot. So-and-so. Brother of so-and-so. Brother of so-and-so. Sister of so-and-so. Mother of so-and-so. Those were all initiations. They were sacrifices to prove the loyalty to the Illuminati. Now watch this. David said to the Most High Yah, try me and see if I won't give my life for the cause of the kingdom. He says, know me, try me, know my thoughts and see, now watch this, if there be any wicked way in me. Now that's the part I was trying to get to in the beginning. Any wicked way? Come on now. Y'all know we got wickedness on the surface. We don't take no deep trial and testing to see our wickedness. We know our wickedness lies. But the king, having tried himself already, came out with a report card that wasn't that bad. But he said it don't mean nothing. I need Yah's report card. I need him to try me. And then to show me the wickedness that's there so I can, watch this, so I can denounce it. Not so I can know it and say, y'all know this just who I am. No, 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 no. I've got to have the wickedness revealed so that I can then say I'm not going to participate in that foolish wickedness any longer. He said, and then I'm going to close with this. He said, and then leave me. There it is, right there. He said, and then lead me in your, did y'all see it? What does it say, lead me where? So y'all know then, if he says to lead me, that he must see himself on life's journey. He has recognized that he's on a path. And that if he doesn't, watch this, have someone to follow, He's going to follow his own mind and his own devices. He might even end up following a wicked way and end up in everlasting condemnation, which we know as hell. 
He said, but I, I don't want to lead myself. I want you to lead me. I, I want you to lead me. The word there is baderak or derak in Hebrew. And it's a very interesting word, derak. It's spelled dalit, resh, final kof. And it's very interesting because the rock is, it, it, it means lead me down a road or a path, but watch this, but a path that has been already walked on. The road is made by footsteps having traveled it and trodden it down. And it comes from a root word, if you just take the first two letters, you see there is a dalit, which represents a tent door, right? And then the second letter is a resh, and of course the, a head. And when you put those two together, you get the idea, you get the idea of a door that moves back and forth, right? But you have a head, and the idea is the head turning around. So the idea of this way has to do with the dalit, the door, which is the family, and then you've got a head, the resh, which turns on its axis of its neck. And the idea is that every time a man's head turns around in the tip completely, it represents a generation. And so when you just have the Dalit and the Resh, you get the picture of a circle. He says, I want you to lead me in the way. So the way is a well-trodden path that's actually secular. He says, I want you to lead me in the way that leads to everlasting life. So the idea is, I'm not traveling simply on a linear course, not knowing where the end is going to be. I want to get on the path that I know where the end is going to be. The end is going to be at the beginning. In other words, if everlasting life started out with the most high in the garden and I want to get on a path of righteousness and walk in his way, then I've got to get on the path that's going to take me back to where man and Yah was one. Uh-oh, hold on. We're not evolving? No. What we're trying to do is get back on the right road. Yeah. Now, when you add the cuff to that circle, that secular pathway, when you add the cuff, of course, cuff represents the palm of a, hand, a man's hand, which represents blessings. It is either receiving a blessing or being a blessing. So watch what happens when you put that in there. It, it, it speaks then to forward progress and the blessing of reaching a goal. Now, the Most High is not trying to make you just go round and round in a circle, but as we travel this path back to him, he's given us a blessing and he gives us a goal. The goal of us, of all of us, the goal is to dwell in the house yeah. of Yah all the days oh, of our life. The goal is to be with him. The goal, y'all y'all with me here, yeah. is to be with the most high Yah, our heavenly father. He says, I need you to search me. I need you to know me. I need you to try me so that you can lead me in the path of righteousness where there are blessings on the road and the final destination is being in the house with you. Oh! Got to say one more thing. Whoo! Somebody please turn with me to John. Chapter 14. You've been so kind. I went longer than I thought I was, but 
John chapter 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. Matter of fact, I'm going to start early. Verse 1, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in y'all. Believe also in me and my father's house. Uh-oh. We're talking about what place? The father's house. What did I tell you was the goal of King David? To dwell in the house of Yah, the father's house, the pathway. It was, it's right here. He says, in my father's house, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you'll be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And uh, Thomas said unto him, Yah, a, a master, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? And Yeshua HaMashiach said to him, it's right here. I'm the way. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I'm. It's me. I'm. I, I'm the Durock. I'm the well trodden path. I, I, I am the one who set up the actual course of things. It started with me. You're going to go around and it's going to all end with me. So this is what he said. I'm the way. I'm the way, I'm the road. But watch this. Not only am I the way, I'm the truth. Every other way is false. The way that Yeshua is talking about is the way of Torah. He says the only one way is the same way that was given to your forefathers. Watch this. He says, and I'm the light. Then I heard him say, and no man. You, you can't come to the Father. It's, 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 you, you can't come. You can't get to the pops house. You can't get in. Unless you come one way. It's the same way that David walked. It's the same way Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes, the prophets, you do know there ain't no two ways, right? There's no two paths. So that should be our prayer. You get it? Search me, know me, try me, and then guide me in the way so that I can be with you and receive your blessings and then dwell with you throughout eternity. Now let me throw this out. Y'all think about it. What was the way? It was the way of the cross. It, it was the way of self-sacrifice. Do you get that? What I'm trying to say? It, it's a way of giving up your rights for another man's wrong. It's a way of forgiveness. It's a way of trial, of tribulation. But the master said, Listen, you're going to go through it. That's just part of the way. But be of good cheer. I've overcome. If you only look at the day he was crucified on that tree. When I say cross, I mean cross beam. Nailed to the tree. If you only look at that, you're only seeing partial. But you have to see how it comes full circle. And it comes full circle when he rises from the dead according to the scripture. And then he tells us, follow me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Think about it now. Let him search you. Matter of fact, ask him to search you. That's what these 10 days are about. Ask him. Search everything about me. Every room in the house. Every thought in the mind. Every intent of the heart. Every word of the mouth. Every deed of the hand. Every direction of the foot. Search it. Know it. Try it. And then lead me in your righteous path that leads to everlasting life. Hallelujah. Amen.
you in this